Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School Class 0824. I am Lieutenant Lee, the Assistant Class Officer of Class 0824. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for morally, mentally, and physically developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers, worthy of special trust and confidence. The Class 0824 class team also includes Lead Class Officer, Lieutenant Brokhoff, Class Recruit Division Commander, Chief Petty Officer Buellis, and Class Drill Instructor, Staff Sergeant Mazin. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the National Anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony are as follows. At 10 Hunter, Captain Everett Alcorn, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Thomas R. T.R. Buchanan, Commander, Subgroup 10, will arrive. The guests in class will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem and the invocation. The commanding officer and guest of honor will then address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized for the presentation of their commission by the guest of honor, and the guests will rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Class, up to him, jump! And salute! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. <laughs> Officer Train Command Newport, arriving. Subgroup 10, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, now the National Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Everts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong saint, we give you our thanks for providing the rest of way within each of these newly trained naval officers so they can stand proud this day for becoming morally, mentally, and physically developed for the service of our fleet. As they prepare for their next evolution in their communities, remind them of what it means to be a leader and to serve. Let them embody humility and selflessness. Remind them to value every sailor and civilian that cross paths with them each day. Impress upon them the initiative, integrity, accountability, and toughness needed to do the right thing, especially when it's difficult. 
embolden them to have ownership of what they are called to do, even when they are called to talk as well. So as these officers look to the horizon, prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead, giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. And as we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Seven boys! Seven Forward! March! Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Clap! Ready? Repeat! Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Buchanan, Alan Massenburg, Captain Bissett, Captain Bradley, Captain O'Leary, Colonel Foot, Colonel Cosin, Distinguished guests, veterans, service members, officer training command staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, the soon to be commissioned officers of OCS Class 08 Tech 24. Good morning. Good morning, sir! I'm excited to welcome 91 of our newest graduates to one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers that of a naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the remarkable individuals seated before us. It has enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of our family and friends on behalf of the Navy and the grateful nation. Please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, I am proud of you. You all had many other options than volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you fulfillment. You have completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You've overcome obstacles. Nothing was handed to you except opportunity opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. You seize that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate you for this significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity to lead what is truly the Navy's most precious resource, sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you're going to be doing significant and meaningful work for our country. The mission of the Navy is of tremendous importance to our nation and the world. America is counting on you to deter aggression, defend our national security interests, and preserve our way of life. Work hard, learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator, Strive to be the best and give your best because nothing else will suffice. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You are about to embark on a great adventure, one in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment will be unlike any other job you have ever had, and regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Thomas R. T. R. Buchanan, Commander of Submarine Group 10. Admiral Buchanan is a native of Vallejo, California, a 1992 graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy and a career submarine officer. He has commanded USS Albany, SSN 753, and Submarine Squadron 20. Additionally, he was a commandant of Mich 
partnership with the U.S. Naval Academy. His leadership is essential to providing combat ready forces to preserve the peace, respond to crisis, and win decisively in war. We are privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Admiral T.R. Kim. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, fellow officers, and candidate officers. Good morning, I'm Admiral T.R. Buchanan, Commander of Submarine Group 10 in uh, Kings Bay, Georgia. And uh, yesterday as we arrived in Providence, I was, I was none too pleased with the weather, but uh, fortunately today we've got a little bit nicer, uh, nicer day to celebrate what a great, great accomplishment. I certainly uh, appreciate the kind introduction and uh, better than I deserve, for sure. As we gather to celebrate this important occasion, we not only recognize the dedication and achievements of our graduates, and I would remark that it's 92 minus one graduates ever, um, but we also reflect on the rich history and enduring legacy of Navy Officer Candidate School. The roots of Officer Candidate School trace back to 1942 when America entered World War II still reeling from the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor. This horrific two-front conflict presented the United States with a challenge that required the very best of them, the American spirit, uh, to overcome. The American people played a crucial role in supporting the war effort by rationing essential materials and volunteering for organizations like the Red Cross. Millions of Americans worked in the factories to produce war supplies, uh, contributing to the immense industrial output necessary for the war effort. And some stepped up to be military leaders, just like you. Going through the rigorous three-month training program in which the Navy and Marine Corps was tasked to not only prepare civilians for war, but to prepare them to lead America to victory. At that time, this program commissioned both Navy and Marine Corps officers. And I recognize the integral, integral role that the Marine Corps continues to play in this institution. The Marine drill instructors are very proficient at sending the fleet disciplined, militarized, and physically fit naval officer, and their success is a testament to the strength of the Navy and Marine Corps team. Next, Navy Chiefs. Something special about OCS is that all the Navy recruit division commanders here wear anchors. This exemplifies the trust we put in the Navy Chiefs to mentor junior officers and instill them with Navy core values of honor, courage, and commitment. You, you will no doubt be party to the saying in the fleet, ask the chief, and I encourage you to lean on your chief or chiefs as a subject matter expert on the technical backbone of the Navy. And teammates, as you embark on your journey into the fleet, equipped with the knowledge and skills imparted to you, during your time at OCS, it is important to embrace the significance of your role. The lessons learned here, discipline, resilience, effective communication will be foundational and serve you well as you grow in your service. And I offer you one guiding phrase that I use to help articulate and center my team in Kings Bay. And I ask my officers and sailors to remember three things, maybe it's six, but consider this a framework for alignment and serves to help articulate how we should approach our day-to-day -day activities that we strive to accomplish every day. Simply put, it goes like this. Our mission, your story, one team. Our mission, and I know you've memorized the Navy mission over and over again, likely aware that you're probably doing some push-ups when you got it wrong, but at the essence, the point is to know that it's all about deterrence. While difficult to measure deterrence day to day, the mission of the Navy is vital to maintaining maritime security, safeguarding American, American interests at sea, and projecting power globally. Your Navy is capable and ready to rapidly deploy forces anywhere in the world to protect essential sea lines for trade and freedom of navigation, and deter potential adversaries by ensuring a devastating fight if 
they dare to attack the United States no matter where we run. One team. I've spoken of our Navy Marine Corps as one team, part of the larger joint team that arguably serves as the greatest military force the world has ever known. While you are all have unique designators and are ready to become critical members of new teams, please remember everyone that you have served with has raised their right hand and sworn to uphold the same oath that you are swearing today. We all have something in common. Mine is just a little bit bigger than yours. We are, and we work together to achieve our mission. Even if we don't always agree, we have an obligation as teammates to make our teams better. And finally, central to all of it is why you're sitting here today. It's this idea of your story. Your stories did not, did not start when you, when you gave you a haircut here, provided you a canteen, said welcome aboard. Some of you grew up in rural towns, some of you are from cities, some come from military families, others don't. Some of you went to small private schools and others went to potentially large state schools. Some of you may have sacrificed the promise of a lucrative career to be here. And some are reaching new heights today in your family's history. But when I speak of your story, this is not a braggart sort of social media story. This is about bringing your experience, your tangible experience into the fleet, recognizing and embracing different backgrounds that sailors that you'll serve with and work under you in order to be effective leaders and to elevate those stories of those around you. And we should be proud of how we connect with each other as humans on this living, breathing, thinking, creative team we call the Navy. And the future of your story is up to you. In four years, some of you may be re-entering the civilian world, hopefully brimming with a sense of pride from serving your country and content with a few incredible stories of driving ships or seeing the world. And some of you will go on to be senior officers in our Navy, leading the change and charge of our service members by keeping Americans safe. One story you may know well is that of Lieutenant Michael Murphy, who, like you, graduated at OCS in December of 2000 before departing for Navy SEAL training. As many know of Operations Red Wings, Lieutenant Murphy was in command of a four-man reconnaissance team tasked with observing a top Taliban commander. And after successful infiltration into a remote part of Afghanistan, a goat herder stumbled upon these seals. And while the seals let the goat herders go peacefully, they were soon surrounded and came under heavy fire. At the cost of his own life, Lieutenant Murphy exposed his position to send a message for reinforcements. He knew the importance of mission and of getting his sailors to safety. And why tell that story here? Because this Medal of Honor recipient once had his name written on the back of an OCS class t-shirt just like yours. And America is relying on you to be the Navy's deck plate leaders in this decade of consequence. With the lessons you have learned here, you are capable of accomplishing more than you thought possible in your story. And the current global landscape is complex and challenging. The Navy continues to be committed to protecting the freedom of navigation in critical waterways like the Taiwan Strait. Concerns persist in the Middle East over Houthi terrorism in the Red Sea, where the U.S. Navy and our partners are playing a vital role in safeguarding maritime security and combating the threats to global trade routes. The Navy is prioritizing its modernization of its fleet and embracing new technologies to adapt to overwhelming and evolving challenges. This includes investments in unmanned systems, cyber warfare capabilities, advanced stealth, advanced weaponry to enhance operational capabilities and maintain our superiority in an increasingly contested maritime environment. As near-peer adversaries seek to expand their influence and capabilities, our Navy balances complex geopolitical dynamics while upholding strategic interests. And integral to this is the Navy's role in strategic nuclear deterrence 
via our ballistic missile submarines, ensuring a credible deterrent against potential adversaries and contributing in our best way possible to global stability. In navigating these multifaceted challenges, the Navy remains a cornerstone of the U.S. national security strategy, constantly adapting and innovating to meet the demands of an ever-changing global landscape. And in this environment of modern warfare, the skills you learned at OCS will prove invaluable. You will draw upon this training to adapt and overcome obstacles that will arise, because they will, from navigating the complexities of strategic decision-making to leading team through a challenging problem. But let me just offer one last final thought from Viktor Frankl's book, A Man's Search for Meaning. Everything can be taken from a man or woman, but one thing, the last of one's human freedom, the ability to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And let me tell you, as a survivor of concentration camp during the Second World War, he knew what it meant to sacrifice. And we should all take a lesson from it. And in closing, I offer my hearty congratulations to our graduates, their families. Thank you for your support of these wonderful leaders who are embarking on a tremendous journey. Today, we celebrate and recognize the honor, courage, and commitment required to, to traverse a challenging curriculum. And as you embark on this next chapter of your journey, may you carry with you the lessons learned here and continue to uphold the proud tradition of excellence that defines the United States Navy. Welcome to America's Warfighting Navy. See you in the fleet. Thank you. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? Good. Attention! Class, raise your right hand. Aye, state your full name. Aye, Aye. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Do you hereby accept such appointment? Do you hereby accept such appointment? And do solemnly swear. And do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend Constitution of the United States. And I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I take this obligation freely. And I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Right. Ready. Feet. We will now recognize the individual awardees for their achievements. Distinguished Naval graduates will also be recognized and have received an overall OCS grade average in the top 10% and accrued fewer than 10 demerits while undergoing training while here at Officer Training Command Newport. The Commander, Jack Levitt Leadership Award is presented to the ensign chosen by the class for their peers who most inspired their class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. This award is being presented to Ensign Hardy. Ensign Hardy has been designated as a SEAL officer. Ensign Hardy is a distinguished naval graduate. The Lieutenant Thomas Eaton Honor Award is presented to the Ensign who has achieved the highest overall average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign O'Brien. The Chapel Clarity United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award is presented to the Ensign who achieved the highest overall grade in physical fitness. This award is also being presented to Ensign O'Brien. And so Brian has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer Candidate. And so Brian is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. The Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Academics Award is presented to the Ensign who has achieved the highest academic average. This award is being presented to Ensign Parsons. 
Ensign Parsons has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer Candidate. Ensign Parsons is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Myers has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer. Ensign Rowland has been designated as an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer. Ensign Gomez has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Dodderwick has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Moore has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer. Ensign Bordeaux has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator. Ensign Bailey has been designated as an Information Professional Officer. Ensign Boyer has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Rodas has been designated as an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer. Ensign Abrera has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Adams has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Anderson has been designated as an Intelligence Officer. Ensign Angelus has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Atango has been designated as a Public Affairs Officer. Ensign Baird has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Ballesteros Paniagua has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Bowman has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Burke has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer. Ensign Caldwell has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Callahan has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Callahan has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Carter has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer. Ensign Caruso has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer Candidate. Ensign Chen has been designated as an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer. Ensign Chan has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer. Ensign Curran has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer. Ensign Dangos has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Danlasky has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator. Ensign Danlasky is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign DeSando has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Dessen has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Donnelly has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer Candidate. Ensign Eckler has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Enriquez has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Field has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer. Ensign Figueroa has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Flores has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Foss has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Garcia has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Warrant Officer 1 Garcia Via Vicencio has been designated as an Air Vehicle Pilot. Ensign Gasco has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Goldstein has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer. Ensign Gonzalez has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Goodwin has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer. Ensign Hack has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer. Ensign Heron has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Heron is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Hill has been designated as a Public Affairs Officer. Ensign Hickson has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Hunter has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer. Ensign James has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Lesnar has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Lowry has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer Candidate. Ensign Lowry is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Lujando Flusa has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator. Ensign Matthews has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer. Ensign Connor Miller has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Haley Miller has been designated as an Intelligence Officer. 
Ensign Lucas Miller has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer candidate. Ensign Minter has been designated as an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer. Ensign Mitchell has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer. Ensign Naylor has been designated as an Information Professional Officer. Ensign Noyes has been designated as an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer. Ensign Olabisi has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer. Ensign Olabisi is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Oldham has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Oriana has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator. Ensign Orlov has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer. Ensign Arona has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Peterson has been designated as an Intelligence Officer. Ensign Philpott has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer Candidate. Ensign Pierre has been designated as an Information Professional Officer. Ensign Reyes has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps Officer. Ensign Richardson has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator. Ensign Richardson is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Rivera Hasselrider has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Royal has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Russell has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer. Ensign Shaw has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer. Ensign Sims has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Slack has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer Candidate. Ensign Slack is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Smith has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Smiley has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Alexandria Solomon has been designated as an Information Professional Officer. Ensign Jacob Solomon has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator. Ensign Taylor has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer. Ensign Thacker has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Upton has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Wachenwerfer has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Weaver has been designated as an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer. Ensign Wilson has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Wong has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer. Ensign Gaines has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer. Ensign Gaines is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest officers. Please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal.
Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photo. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field. On behalf of the commanding officer, thank you for attending today's ceremony.